this video is going to be an introduction to using the navigation tools that are built into Godot 4. This uses the navigation server, the navigation map, navigation regions, and agents, and it's all a part of my most recent chapter for Godot for Beginners, all about navigation. This will just give you a leg up when you're trying to create your own navigation scenes for the first time, knowing what nodes are there and what kind of functions you might want to use to figure out how to get an object from point A to point B. There are a few moving parts that need to connect in order to see results. Firstly, we need to create a navigation region 3D. Then we need to create a mesh with collisions to act as the floor of our region. After that, we need to create a character body 3D for the enemy, with a mesh instance 3D, collision shape, and a navigation agent 3D node. Then we need to create a script to move the enemy around. Lastly, we need a function that picks positions to move the enemy to, as well as adding a camera 3D to observe it all. I'll create a new empty project called Navigation Demo. Start by creating a new scene with a Navigation Region 3D as the root node. Select the Other Node option from the scene tree, and in the Create New Node window, search for Navigation Region 3D and click Create. With the Navigation Region 3D in our scene, we get a yellow icon warning us that we need a Navigation Mesh to be able to use this region. The navigation mesh is a collection of polygons that contains the position an agent can travel through. With the navigation region 3D selected in the scene tree, click the drop down to the right of the navigation mesh property in the inspector, and from the drop down, create a new navigation mesh. Creating this object is the first step that will let us go on to bake the polygons for our navigation server to use. Expanding this object will reveal a host of properties we can customize. The geometry dropdown lets us decide how we will bake our mesh. We can either create it from mesh instances or static bodies, and the nodes it samples can either be children of this navigation region or nodes with a specific group name. Let's keep the default settings and use mesh instances that are children of the navigation region 3D to bake our navigation mesh. CSG shapes are the de facto node for quickly prototyping geometry in Godot. These have a mesh we can add collisions to, so the enemy can stand on the mesh later on. Add a new CSG box 3D node as a child of the navigation region 3D. Select the CSG box 3D in the scene tree, and in the inspector, set its size properties X and Y dimensions to 10 meters. Then enable the use collision property. I find it helpful to line up the top of the box with zero meters on the y-axis. Because the box is one meter tall, you can do this by setting the y-position to negative 0.5 meters. Now we have a mesh as a child of the Navigation Region 3D, we can bake a navigation mesh. Select the Navigation Region 3D in the scene tree, and at the top of the viewport you'll find a contextual bake nav mesh button. Click it, and you'll see a teal mesh drawn floating above the CSG box 3D. Note, the navigation mesh is drawn above the ground as these are positions agents will want to walk towards, so you want the mesh to be near the centre of your agent's body vertically. If the mesh was at ground level, whenever an agent tried to walk towards a point, their motion would have a downwards component, causing friction and slowing them down. You can change the height of this navigation mesh with the cell height property. Note 2. You will also notice this mesh doesn't reach the edge of our CSG box 3D, and this is for the same reason as the height. Our agents will have a certain radius that affects their ability to move. If there was a wall at the edge of this floor space, and an agent walked all the way to the edge, they would clip through it depending on their radius. You can control the spacing at the edges of a navigation mesh with the agent radius property. Save the scene. I named mine navigation level dot scene. With a floor to walk on, a navigation region, and a navigation mesh, we can now focus on creating an NPC capable of exploring the space. This character will need a character body 3D, mesh instance 3D, collision shape 3D, navigation agent 3D, and a script. Create a new scene and select character body 3D as the root node. Then, add a Mesh Instance 3D as a child. In the inspector, set its mesh property to a Capsule Mesh. 
we can create a matching collision shape 3D with the contextual mesh button at the top of the viewport. Select the Create Simplified Convex Collision Sibling option. Lastly, select the root Character Body 3D node and add a Navigation Agent 3D node as a child. This node is how our NPC will communicate with the navigation server, requesting paths from one point on the navigation mesh to another. To make paths easier to see, when we get to running the level, I highly recommend enabling debug paths for the Navigation Agent 3D. With it selected in the scene tree, in the inspector, find the debug tab and check the enables property. When we get to running levels, a line will be drawn in the viewport showing the paths the Navigation Agent 3D is trying to follow. Rename the Character Body 3D root node to Navigation NPC, then attach a script. Note, renaming the root node changes the default name of the script that gets attached and can help explain the scene tree at a glance, so it's always a good move. In the Attach Node Script dialog, disable the template checkmark. By default, when creating a Character Body 3D, the script is set up with a template including player character movement. Although we could start from that point and adapt it to be an NPC, it will be easier to work with an empty script. After that, click the Create button. To interact with the navigation server, we need to get a reference to the Navigation Agent 3D. This node is how we will communicate with the navigation server, telling it where we want to navigate to, and it will tell us how to get there. Note, the official documentation for navigation elements is stellar. You can read about navigation agents in more detail in the link in the description. So here we needed to define a variable, at on ready var navigation agent 3D, colon equals navigation agent 3D with a dollar sign. We need to tell the navigation server where we want to go, for it to then be able to tell us how to navigate there. For testing purposes, we will want to do this multiple times, so I am going to put the code for setting a destination in an unhandled input function. Whenever we press the spacebar, we generate a new random position in the same dimensions as the CSG box 3D floor. When we pass this location to the navigation server, it will map the point onto the nearest valid position in the map. Once the position is generated, we pass it onto the navigation server with the navigation agent 3D's set target position function. Now we have the target position, we want to make the AI follow the path the navigation server has come up with from the agent to that destination. When the navigation server creates a route to follow, it is a series of straight lines avoiding any obstacles. The Navigation Agent 3D has a few functions to let us access this path. If our NPCs were going to not have physics enabled and just travel straight to destination points, we could use the path in a Path 3D node. However, in our case, we want to make our AI walk towards whatever the next point on our journey is with physics. We can get the global position of the next point on our journey with the Navigation Agent 3D .get next path position function but we need to do some vector math to make that point in 3D space useful to us. In the physics process built-in function, add the following lines of code. We need to create a destination variable, where we are going to assign that to our next path position in the navigation agent, and we are going to find a local destination from that position, and we get that by taking the destination and subtracting our current global position. We can then create a direction by taking that local destination and normalizing it. There are a few ways to move the NPC with this direction. The most straightforward is to set their velocity to this direction multiplied by a speed, then call the move and slide function so the character body 3D applies its velocity to itself. Save the scene. I named it Navigation NPC. Return to the navigation level and right click on the root node. In the drop down, select Instantiate Child Scene. This opens a dialog where we can add any scene we have saved as a child of our current scene. Select our navigation NPC from the list and click Open. The center of this NPC is in the floor, so we need to move it up to not click through. Select the navigation NPC and set its positions properties Y value to 1 meter. Alternatively, provided your object is above floor level, you can hit page down and the object will be cast down to floor level. 
Now our NPC is in the right spot, we can add a camera 3D, world environment, and directional light 3D to see the AI in action. Click the three vertical dots at the top of the viewport and add a new world environment and sun to the navigation level scene. Now when we add a camera 3D, we'll be able to see what is going on. Select the navigation region 3D root node and add a new camera 3D node as a child. In the inspector, set the camera's position's Y value to 8 meters and its rotation's X value to negative 90. This will position our camera above the navigation area, pointing straight downwards so we can see the NPC move about. Note, you can preview what the camera can see with the preview check mark at the top left of the viewport when the camera 3D is selected, or by using the Control shift p shortcut. Run the scene. If prompted, select the navigation level as the main scene with the Select Current button. You will see the NPC in the middle of the screen. Whenever you press the spacebar, they will select and move to a random point around them. If you enabled the debug view on the Navigation Agent 3D earlier, you will see a line with points the Navigation Agent is trying to follow. With that, we have the bare essentials set up. We have an agent that can move around. There are a few key things we need to do to make this practically useful. At the moment, it's moving in a straight line to any of these points, which you could figure out without a navigation region. So we're going to need obstacles to avoid. But I am not going to miss this mid-roll opportunity to talk about Godot for Beginners. This is an excerpt from my navigation chapter of that course, which you can buy on itch.io, and it comes with a big project full of example code and scenes for a big 3D project in Godot 4, and a bunch of documentation on getting up and running with the engine. I also have a course with GameDevDV on getting started making complete 3D games in Godot that will teach you how to make three complete games, and that's well worth a look if you're interested in more from me. All right, that's enough shilling. With that, let's head back to the video. Our navigation is now up and running, but we aren't seeing the benefits of navigation as our NPC is walking directly to a target and not having to avoid any obstacles. Return to the navigation level scene, and we will add a few shapes the NPC will need to navigate around. Add a new CSG box 3D to the scene and use the gizmo to reposition it on the platform. Set its Y position to 0.5 meters so it is at ground level, and enable its Use Collision property. You can now rotate and resize it as you see fit until you have an area that isn't simple to navigate. I added five boxes varying from 2 to 3 meters wide and rotated them about the Y axis, making sure to leave gaps in between large enough for the NPC to fit through. We now need to rebake the navigation mesh to take the new obstacles into account. Unfortunately, because the NPC is a child of the navigation mesh, its shape will be included in the bake. Typically, your navigation agents wouldn't be children of the navigation mesh, but if they are, you can use group tags to restrict what the navigation region 3D samples, or do what I'm about to show you. A quick workaround is to move the NPC out of the way off of the CSG box 3D, then select the navigation region 3D, and click the contextual bake navigation button at the top of the viewport again. Or alternatively, you can just move the navigation agent to no longer be a child of the navigation region, whatever you prefer. With the navigation mesh baked, you can return the navigation agent 3D to its original spot and run the scene again to see more complex navigation paths in action. And with that, we have pretty much the most bare bones setup of having an agent and picking a position for it to travel to and having it avoid those obstacles. Heyo, mid-editing Bram here. I've noticed one thing that's worth knowing about property-wise for when you're actually putting this scene together. If you notice that your body is colliding with corners of the objects, that can actually be fine-tuned with the path desired distance property that's on the navigation agent 3D itself. That's a property that tells the agent, when I've got this close to a point, I'm going to consider it reached. It starts a little bit loose, uh, a bit high, one meters, so it considers itself having reached the point even when it's uh, a little bit off. The lower that is, the more precisely the agent will move along its path, um, but uh, it might get a bit hung up on trying to exactly reach a spot and making sure it goes back and doesn't overshoot them. So it's a property to fiddle with at your own leisure. All right, that's it for me. In your own games, there are a bunch of things you might want to do from here. 
you would likely want to swap out generating random positions to either be positions obtained from a raycast from the mouse, say clicking on a spot on the map, and then having the navigation agent navigate to there. Another simple thing you might be, want to do is just make the agent move to wherever the player currently is, in which case the navigation agent is a reference to the player, and you can just have it follow them around. I go into a bunch of detail on a lot more ways you can use stuff like this in your projects and go through how I set up everything in Godot for beginners. In there I do a bunch of stuff like orienting the enemy to face in a certain way, using navigation links to jump off of platforms, and having the player and enemies be able to deal damage to each other or even triggering enemies when the player gets close enough. But from what we've covered so far, you should have the fundamentals of using setting the position for the navigation agent to navigate towards, and also using the position the navigation region generates to then move to the destination. Alright, this has been a crash course on navigation in Godot using navigation agents and regions. Hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, I'm Bramwell, and you can subscribe to this channel if you want to make me very, very happy. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.